Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Gwent, and today we're playing the new Banished Seasonal Event, which is an alternate game mode in which every card our deck gets banished at the start of the match. That means our starting hand is all we get, and that changes a lot. So let's go take a look at the deck. So today we'll be playing a Syndicate Blood Money Bounty deck, because Bounty is really effective since this rework for the leader ability, and also particularly good when our opponent has a lot of high base power cards, which tends to be something that happens in this event since, with only the cards in our starting hand, rounds tend to be shorter, people tend to play point slams and less engines, which works well for Bounty. We're gonna try to have something that can set bounties, and something that can deal damage to, slash outright remove, cards that have bounties in every round. For setting bounties, we have stuff like Witchfinder, which is really good at doing that, and similarly, Caleb is probably our next best card at setting bounties, particularly in long rounds because they both can set multiple bounties. Then more along the one-time bounty route, Professor, along with the Witch Hunters as well. We have a couple of these. Professor is particularly good because he can deal damage, which helps you either immediately destroy something with a bounty and get some coins at the beginning of the round, which can be kind of tough with this deck, but otherwise just try to find coins from another source or go after a weaker target with your initial bounty. We have a few more things that can set bounties with Kurt as well. Similarly, we also have Fabian Hale. This is another way you can get some coins at the beginning of a round, which again is sometimes the trickiest part with bounty, because if you already have a bounty on one of your opponent's cards, you can get additional coins by playing Fabian Hale, so that is a nice way to get you started early if necessary, otherwise just use him to set that first bounty. Even more bounty with Salamander Assassin, mostly for the bounty here, although you can also, if you have both of them in the same round, you can use the orders to get rid of something with bounty as well, but just bear in mind, this is your only source of poison, these two guys, so mostly here just for additional bounty. Then, for spending coins to deal with the bounties, there's the straightforward stuff, like Freak Show, deal damage by spending coins, and take out stuff that is bounties. Again, you're ideally going for high base power cards. You don't really want things that have armor. You don't really want things that have boosts. Similar story for the Executioner. In this case, you need to have bounty on it to deal damage. Otherwise, it's just a bleed, which is, I mean, still value, but it's, it's much less efficient. Whereas Freak Show can deal damage even if something doesn't have a bounty. Then, speaking of, we have Scoundrel. And Scoundrel can only deal damage to cards that have bounty. So otherwise, he's just a point slam. But because your opponent doesn't have anything in their deck, that means at worst, he's a 12 point slam, which is certainly still not bad. So this is potentially still a good thing to do as a point slam in a really short round three, which does happen on occasion in this event. But there are also some tall removal specific cards that we have to deal with things like Tibor, and we need to be careful that we don't accidentally activate those on the scoundrel with things like Villain Threaten Birth. So if your opponent doesn't play something huge like a 15 point Tibor, and you do have a 12 point scoundrel on the board, then you can still play Villain Threaten Birth on your very last turn. That way the timer will not activate and therefore scoundrel will still be safe. The same cannot be said for Curse of Corruption though. This one, if you have the scoundrel in your hand, you just need to be really careful and probably play Curse of Corruption early or in a different round so that you don't risk having to destroy your own card with it. And then there is one other even more significant way to remove your opponent's cards. It does potentially mean getting an even larger card still on your side. So Graydon can remove a card that has a bounty on it. If you pay those coins, you get boosted by its base power. Again, if your opponent has something absolutely humongous, like say a Tibor, then you can get Graydon boosted up to an 18 if you spend that tribute, which is amazing. But then again, just make sure you aren't about to destroy your own Graydon, because that would really stink. And it is possible to do this against Tibor in particular, who is probably the single most powerful and most common card in this event, because Tibor, despite having immunity, you can still get a bounty on him with the Witchfinder, and once Tibor has a bounty, Graydon can get rid of him. Doesn't matter if he has immunity. We could, however, also go for Purification to get rid of that immunity, using Siegfried to then allow us to, after that, go with some bounties and some damage, take out Tibor. The other way we can get a bounty onto Tibor, though, is by using Purge to destroy our opponent's card and then setting a bounty on your opponent's highest card, which if they have Tibor, it's going to be Tibor. And that way, again, Graydon can still get rid of Tibor, even if Tibor still has its immune status. And then uh, technically, Bare Knuckle Brawler can deal damage regardless of whether your opponent has a bounty or immunity, so that is one way to still get some value out of your coins. And you can also get a little bit of extra damage from the Vigilantes whenever you set one of those bounties. So lots of ways for us to adapt around what exactly your opponent is trying to do. But of course, the big picture is just set bounties, deal damage, remove bounties, rinse, repeat, and in the process, be careful that you don't accidentally destroy one of your own tall cards with some of our dedicated tall removal, like Phil and Trent Mirth and Curse of Corruption. But with all that being said, let's go see it in action. All right, so going up against Nilfgaard here, and they'll go first. All right, so whenever we're going up against Nilfgaard, we need to always have a potential answer for Tibor. And what is that answer here? Potentially Curse of Corruption, although we'd like for a way to also put points on the board in the process. Bare Knuckle Brawler technically can at least still hit him, although hard to destroy him altogether. Uh, Purge can put a bounty on him, and then we can remove him with Graydon. That's actually our best way to make it happen. So, okay. Technically do have enough poison here to remove as well, if we can keep these guys in the same round. Okay, this is 
going to be difficult. Don't have a lot of bounty, so I'm actually going to dump Vigilantes. Siegfried, though, is very nice for Tibor as well. And again, Tibor, probably far and away the strongest card in this event. And very common to see. Imperial Golem, also very effective, but this is also why we have Bounty, because we like going after tall cards. So, they have Lock, though. With imprisonment, which is going to make these Salamander Assassins difficult to get the, uh, the poison to work. I guess we still get the bounty on deploy, though, at the very least. So, do that, and then we could Curse of Corruption and get pretty huge value out of that. That may be the play here. And then we're relying on uh, Purge plus Graydon is our win condition against Tibor himself. Okay, expected the lock, but we were prepared. We were prepared to do this for, I mean, we're technically going to over-generate coins, but pretty sweet value here. Okay, Master Disguise is going to get boosted. We do not like boosts. We do not like boosts, because they are generally very inefficient to get rid of. I mean, technically speaking, we could Siegfried, remove the lock, you're no longer an engine, then we've both played three cards, if they pass next turn, we go Salamander Assassin, we can use your order ability to poison once, we still need one more turn after that to have time to use that order to remove you with the double poison. It'd be a little awkward if they time that well with the pass, but I think we give that a shot. And we can't play Salamander Assassin first, otherwise we lose the bounty on you. Technically, we could have purified with uh, Kurt as well, but yeah, that use case for Siegfried is usually to purify t or at least have a way to, to do that. But we're relying on Purge, which does not require that uh, t remove his immunity. Okay, what is this going to be lock again? I mean, technically, well, <laughs> we were just saying it is still possible for us to do this. Um, technically speaking... Order of operations wise, it is better to do this first and then purify with Kurt. Because then that means on the same turn we purify with Kurt, we can double poison immediately and take you out. And now we don't need to worry about Siegfried purifying the bounty there, because this is only going to purify you and you alone. Unless they go with the leader ability charge. Then, then that complicates things. Alright, we may need to bail on this round at this point may need to bail in this round at this point, which means in terms of bounty setting, that's going to be our key limiting factor. We're definitely going to need Kurt to do that, and we're very much relying on Purge to get the bounty for Graydon to go after Tibor. So that's going to be tough, but we're going to see if we can still do it. Alright, so they have played one more card than us, but they've won round one. They're going to dry pass. So definitely don't want to use any of our bounty setters. The question here is basically, do you dump Brawler or do you dump Executioner? You are going to get boosted by one when we play Purge. But I think we want the Witch Hunters to help support Purge because we do need to get the Death Blow on this to jump the bounty over onto Tibor. So I think for that reason, you're the best. Even if you can technically still hit Tibor, even if he has the immunity, there is still a case to be made for keeping you, but... Okay, and now it's turn one. Witch Hunter Executioner gets us up to four coins. We still have our leader ability up to seven now. So that should help us as well. They have one charge remaining. They may very well use it on you. Honestly, not the absolute end of the world that they do. Just having you on the board as a Witch Hunter increases Purge's damage to four, which makes it now possible for us to destroy something on Rune Mage unless they boost the Rune Mage. But we want to wait to do that until they play Tibor, if they are going to play Tibor, and then go after that card with Graydon. Ooh, okay, well, suddenly it is not possible anymore. Not at the moment, at least. But we should still be able to change that. There, f mm, What's the best way to do this? I think it is probably Melee Row Kurt, and it might even be Leader Ability to get the death blow 
because you're not going to have enough coins to do it. Can't use Purge yet. Can't use Graydon yet. Could use Muriel, so though not super effective. We're probably not going to end up using his tribute. We'll end up seeing if we have enough coins to make that happen later on, but it's a melee row here for the bounty. And obviously it doesn't matter which one we're putting this on. In either case, it's going to be leader ability to get rid of you. So we wouldn't have had enough coins to do it if we had not done that. We are now at maximum coinage. We are now down to just one point on our leader ability, though. That might also help us to line up a purge. We now have two Witch Hunters, which means this is up to five power. So now this could get a death blow on the Slave Infantry and move it on to Tibor if they play Tibor next. If they have Tibor, they should be playing him soon because he is technically an engine. So if they don't play him this turn, then we may start to act on the assumption that they aren't going to use him, but we'll see. Maybe they're going to play him last because they have Lasse and they're trying to make sure that we don't have any other form of Tall removal. Okay, Light Cavalry. That's a little tricky. Honestly, I think we just Muriel's here, don't we? We can take him out immediately. Yeah, they destroy one of these guys. We still have a Purge. We should still have enough damage that we can destroy you on Purge, transfer over the bounty to someone else. Graydon, uh, I mean, we should have enough coins to use his Tribute. So let's do this. I uh, shouldn't need the Tribute here. So enough damage to just remove you altogether. I'm expecting them to lock the Witch Hunter Executioner. I'm surprised they haven't done that yet, to be honest. But actually, they rage quit. And so we will take the win. They just couldn't handle the bounty. All right, so going up against Skoytel here. And they'll go first. Okay, so this is going to be a tough matchup for us because they have a lot of boosting. And in general, boosting is not something we want to see as a bounty deck. But how can we still make this work? Poison... Could be nifty if we had another source of it, but we would need the other Salamander Assassin. We don't have that right now. So, uh, I mean, you could help us against a highly boosted card here. Uh, I think we're dumping you. I think we're dumping you. Okay, perfect. Now we have enough poison that we can remove with Salamander Assassin. That gives us a few bounties. Witch Finder certainly gives us a lot of bounties. Professor as well, and then we have Executioner can deal damage to the cards that have the bounties. Freak Show can as well. Mareels, we'd like to use him against a card that has a bounty on it, but we don't necessarily have to. This actually is a pretty crucially important card for us against hand buff here. Assuming they have something really highly hand boosted, if they're going to try to play at the end of the match, we'd love to have Last Say and use Mareels to just take it out using that tribute, or similarly Curse Corruption, although the problem with this is that although you may be removing their best card, you are not putting any points on the board yourself. So we potentially find ourselves getting tied in that. We also hate Veil. So I'm already disgusted with this. <laughs> um, yikes. We obviously can't put a bounty on that. That is not good news for us. We, I think, may very well immediately pass. I think we let them play one more card than us and pass because we don't want to mess with highly boosted cards. Certainly not if they have Veil. It does mean they're going to have last say. That is the price we are paying, though. And that's going to make it really hard for us to use Mareels to take out their most highly boosted card. So do they drive past here? They do not. Shoop stay out. They're looking for resilience, presumably. Do they get it? They don't. They get damage, and they don't have anywhere to put that damage. Okay. It's a 10-point body. We technically have two turns to catch it. We do like tall units, and that is a tall unit that does not have any boost on it, so that is a great target for our bounty. I'm eyeing something like Professor, ties us at six, and then we could turn around, even leader ability if we absolutely had to, though we don't need to take you out on this turn. So I think we're looking at Professor here. Then... We don't have any coins at the moment. It's a little bit tricky. Unless and until we take you out, that will give us a lot of coins. So, I mean, we could... Ah, uh, no, we can't curse corruption anymore. Okay, that is not something we like to see, because that's a lot of boosts on that guy. Although you are now the highest card, so we could curse of corruption you, and then leader ability is enough to take out Shoop Knight. Give us the, well, full coin return from a 10 base power unit. I think we do that. We will get our leader ability back at one power, which is not great, but given how aggressively they're pushing here, I think that's fine. And it does give us the coins, which is something that we were lacking before. Okay, Dunka Veil. Hate it. Hate the Veil. Technically speaking, Freak Show can destroy you, but we would have to blow through 
just about all of our coins to do it, which would stink. So I don't like that, especially when we would love to be able to hold on to some of those coins for reals. No bounty, no bleed, no bounty or poison. Yeah, not good news. I mean, we may be able to get more coins back, of course, with future bounties, but not sure we have any alternative other than to use Freak Show. Technically, oh, we are over-profiting a little bit. There's a case to be made for not using all the damage right now. I think I am still going to do it to deny further hand buff. But the case against that was going to be wait for them to play another card. And instead of getting the death blow from Freak Show, weaken with Freak Show, destroy with Purge, transfer the bounty over to something else. It's very odd that they're playing Torque this early, right? I think this becomes a Salamander Assassin target because although it's kind of slow, it doesn't catch them on this turn. We really don't want to split these Salamander Assassins. But it's a great way to get rid of a card that is highly boosted because otherwise we're spending, you know, one coin per damage, and that's not something we're gonna be able to do to take out Torque all that efficiently. Unless we're combining these two, which, uh, you know what? I think we actually do that. I think we actually do that. Let's make sure we click on these. You're gonna get the bounty on you. Then we're gonna deal some damage if they keep on playing. So we pass them on this turn, is one of the reasons why I wanted to do that. So they need to play further, otherwise they're in trouble. Okay, they can try its caress, sure, but Witchfinder's still gonna put the bounty back on you. I mean, yes, Salamander Assassin is technically still the most efficient way of spending coins to get rid of you, that or real, so though I'm still expecting them to have something else that Torque has been assisting with the hand buff on, so I'm trying to save you for that. So I think, I think we may go Salamander Assassin and try to get the depot on the poison. It does mean that we're splitting the Assassins, potentially splitting the Assassins, if they pass here, which means this, I mean, it's still setting a bounty, even if we uh, strain that by itself without its partner in round three, so it's still not useless. Okay. Needless to say, I do hate the purification. However, on that occasion, they rushed it because it's actually the the order ability that matters here because once again, Witchfinder's still gonna continue to put the bounty back on you every turn. So, I mean, we're also gonna put the bounty back on you right now, but... Uh, preference between rows. Don't want you all the way to the right, in case they have, uh, Brahan. So also not using Freak Show here. I'm gonna hold off on this, because I want to make sure that we have the chance to use the poison on the same target. In case they have another source of purification. At this point, I kind of doubt it, but we'll see. And okay, they do pass now. So we have already passed them, points-wise, so we technically don't need to do this. If we were to do it, we'd need to play another card, of course. I think, although it's a little painful that we don't get the chance to benefit from that bounty, power up our leader ability a little bit, get a little more coins, I think we still have to act on the assumption that getting one card advantage and having last say in round three is more valuable. Okay, so now our win condition is simple. It is Witch Hunter Executioner first to get some coins and to get one more Witch Hunter on the board. Now we're gonna purge whatever they play next. And we really want this to be in purge range. We will use our leader ability to get it into purge range if we have to. What is that going to be to get? Cause if it's, I actually have no idea what they're going for. That's an odd one. Really want this to be in purge range. And it should be with the assistance of leader ability, right? Because you're a witch hunter. Oh, but we, no, we need to wait one more time. Mm -hmm. I wanted to purge to transfer bounty onto someone else, then use Fabian Hale to get the coins from having done that. This might have to be Fabian Hale right now. It is. It does have to be, doesn't it? It does. Okay, never mind. Not exactly the order of operations I was expecting, but I think we can still make this work. Uh, we do need to do this. Otherwise, we're not going to have enough damage. really need to get two more coins here. So Purge is pretty crucial. And do you have oh, the armor? <laughs> uh... You're both witch hunters. So this is up to five damage. And then, but it doesn't put a bounty on itself. Again, we, um, we're not going to get the death blow. We're not going to get the tribute for Mareels. Which is probably going to mean that we lose this, but one damage, five damage, six damage. I mean, we can remove your armor, of course, but that's not good enough. Unless, knowing that we're not going to get the tribute on Mareels, do we actually go 
we might actually, I think we do, play him here. We do this, it's another Witch Hunter. And we're gonna use this to take out Giant Slayer on our next turn. It's not that big. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Okay, we have this. Okay, yep, I mean, it was not that complicated. It was gonna be Purge, take you out, move Bounty, and then we can actually deal damage with the Witch Hunter Executioner on something that has Bounty rather than relying on the bleed. But we had more than enough from Purge alone. All right, so going up against the Northern Realms here. And they'll go first. All right, so this is going to be a tough matchup for us because they have some boosts with Uprising and they also have some Veil with Crystal Skull. Those are two things that we do not like. We can get rid of some high power stuff with these two, although if we are going to break out Scoundrel, that is a risk that we need to be very careful about managing. Let's get rid of Curse of Corruption. And we can always play Villain Treadmirth last turn to avoid destroying Scoundrel if necessary. Which Finder? Let's see. We need more uh, Fee Spenders. Okay, there's one, but only one. A uh, two, okay, we have two. A uh, three, actually, with Scoundrel. Okay, no, we're fine, we're fine then. Okay, also don't like armor, for what it's worth. Also not a huge fan of armor, because that just makes it less efficient for us to spend coins to uh, trigger bounties and keep those bounties going. However, they have not put up very many points there, so we could drop a tax collector and just get a little bit of coinage out of that. But that probably would be the only thing we want to play in this round. We really don't want to be playing when they just have that extra Crystal Skull advantage. We, I think, want to have them play one more card than we do, try pass in round two, and, and leave it at that. But potentially little opportunity to get some quote-unquote free coins. Granted, of course, our coin count is going to get cut in half. In between rounds, there's the double veil. No thank you. And it means tax collector doesn't really get much time benefit, so that's the reason why we're still not thrilled about going that route. They'll win round one. All right, now, do they, they do try to push. Wow, okay. Very greedy. But let's see here. In that case, again, we don't like boosting, but that is going to be the thing that they do a whole lot of, unfortunately. We need to be, well, I guess we don't need to be that protective of our spenders, because as we've established, we have a little bit more than we're giving ourselves credit for. We could Villain Threaten Mirth, and then that way, we're either taking out this Rat of Entorial Guards or whatever else they try to play along with him. And again, there was otherwise going to be some risk that we have that backfire on Scoundrel, so I think we do that. Okay, Vincent, thankfully not getting used on Scoundrel. Otherwise, that would have been very bad. But now our tough part here is that they are on four power with all their stuff. So we actually have a chance of Villain Treadmirth backfiring on us, which is, of course, also not ideal. But we could take our chances on a Witch Hunter, hope that we happen to put a bounty on whichever one Villain Treadmirth is going to happen to choose, and... It's a two-third chance it destroys one of their cards, one-third chance it destroys one of our cards, one-third chance that it destroys the card on their side that we put the bounty on. So uh, that's that's kind of what we're what we're banking on here, I think. And this is a card that we are okay about losing. I prefer for it to be Vincent, because that's a little bit less well, well. Less efficient for us to break through with with damage. So I would like for Villain Treadmirth to just get rid of it for us, because it has the armor. Then again, it has one base or two base power, so it would have been less valuable. Obviously, it was also the wrong guess in hindsight. Okay, Adrenaline Rush is making this look increasingly, though, like it may be a Graydon target, because less so for the increasing based on the base power. We don't have enough for the tribute anyway. More so just because it's a very efficient way to remove a unit that has bounty regardless of how many boosts it has. And you have 10 points of boost right now, so removing it with anything else is extremely inefficient. Borderline impossible just because we can only have 9 coins at a time, so it would take a very long time, multiple rounds of coin generation to make it happen. So I think it's going to have to be great in here. So again, no tribute here, not that it would have made much of a difference. 
But they are getting very greedy. And we got we did get lucky with Phil and Trenworth, don't get me wrong. However. However, then again, they did just get resilience on musicians of Blaviken, so I don't think we can say that that uh, the luck has all been falling on our side. Okay, I think we do get at least one of our spenders out here. Probably the Executioner gives us a little bit of profit, and I'd rather not have to break out either of these two. I'd like to save them for round three. I think this might be the last thing they're going to play. That would kind of make sense. Let's throw a bleed on it. One round of bleed on it for good measure, because that will mean it's weakened going into the next round, which will make it a little bit easier of a bounty target, if that is something we are going after. But no, they are playing further. Okay, they're going to go after Executioner. We do have another one. Okay. In this case, then, uh, we could also leader ability. We certainly have enough to do that but just trying to find the most efficient way to make this work here i mean we can i guess we could still do this i'm trying to gauge how far they're trying to push in this round i looked at several points of time like they were going to stop like when they got the resilience on the world's luckiest musicians but i guess we'll do we'll do this it gets us up to six. And then we play you just because we kind of have to. And we have two sources of bounty left, both of which are best in the long round, which is why I was trying to delay them to a certain extent. But now I think we go Caleb because we can bounty at the start of our turn and immediately start taking out Vandegrift. And we should have enough coins to do that, whereas Witchfinder happens at the end of our turn. You're also going to be kind of questionable, potentially, because they were all based on long rounds. Okay, so we do this. Oh. You're going to survive on one power. Okay. I think we still do it, though. Because we have still some ways to, to make that work. Would love if we had one point leader ability right about now. All right, now they're just getting reckless. So this, at this point, we, okay. Well, well then. Well then. I think we can still make this work. I think we can still make this work. Obviously we have to go all in at this point. We go Witchfinder, which gives us coins to finish off this bounty. She will put a bounty on Shoop Knight, which is going to be difficult to destroy but as long as we get it down to below four, Vigilantes may have to be our, our round three play. I mean, technically we go Vigilantes first. That is a little bit more effective for the, the Witch Finder. Okay, this is very risky. I'm banking on them passing. I think I'm banking on them passing here, basically. That's in order to enable Witch Finder and Caleb. Okay, that's unfortunate, yes. But still... Yeah, no. Best case scenario is a tie now. Guys, what's happening in this event? <laughs> Why do we have to be like this? Um, okay. So now... No, we can still win this. We can still win this. So we go... We have one point leader ability. Um, but like this, and Tivor and all that stuff, it's like, come on, guys. <laughs> can we just behave like rational human beings? Okay. So now, you're going to drop down. You're going to be a 10. Scoundrel beats you. You're going to take 3 damage on your turn. So this is fine. Technically, we aren't going to have any way to spend our coins anyway. So we might as well do this just to be safe. Also, we are going to get the damage from Vigilantes. Conveniently, weakening Shoop Knight. So we have pass now. So we will win round 3. They relied entirely on getting... Playing all of their cards in round two and then just getting all that resilience for round three. Meaning that they hoped they weren't going to have to play anything at all. But because we still have a scoundrel, I mean, they may think they can still win this, but... Oh, actually, yeah, and you have bounty, so we could still use the, uh... The, uh, coins actually would have been more efficient to save them here. But either way, we will beat them and take the win.
So there's a look at the Syndicate Bounty deck for the new Banished Seasonal Event. If you liked the video, then make sure to hit the like and subscribe button, and leave a comment down below letting me know which other cards, archetypes, and factions you'd like us to experiment with next. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.